Hey what is going on everyone this is Wicked and tonight I'm gonna be testing out the newest Seer Droid ROM based on Android 7.0 codename Nougat. This ROM is mainly based on CM14, adding a little bit of Seer Droid customizability to its interface. A little disclaimer about this ROM, I'll test in the following minutes. CM14 is still in an early stage of development. Video camera in this ROM isn't working at all, so if that is a crucial deal for you, then you should consider that before flashing it. Thanks to XDA recognized contributor Firebird11 for posting this ROM. The link to the XDA thread and also the ROM will be found in the description right down below, as well as the timestamps for this video. Also, if you want to see more CM14 ROMs in the future, make sure to subscribe right down to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Let's Get Wicked. In order to get this ROM running, the first thing you'll need to do is getting into recovery. I strongly recommend making an Android backup before installing this ROM. In case you won't like it, then you'll be able to restore your previous configuration without a miss. Better be safe than sorry. Moving on, making a full wipe is part of my day-to-day -day flashing step, especially when upgrading from an Android version to another one. Click wipe and then advanced wipe. Here you have to check those positions and afterward click swipe to wipe. After you're done wiping your Galaxy S4, click back a couple of times and then click install. Select the storage when you place the ROM and GAPS package. Then search for cdroid.zip and swipe to install it. This process will have two errors at the end of the installation, but no need to worry about, everything is fine. Click back and then flash the GAPS file. This will take some time depending on what type of GAPS package you downloaded. After you flashed it, click reboot and let's check out the boot animation, shall we? Right after the booting process, you'll see some differences between the stock CM14 and this ROM. You have vision settings right down below, which for some reason will cause the settings app to force close. That's not a great sign from the beginning of the testing process. I set up all my data, credentials, Wi-Fi and Google accounts so I can make an opinion about how suitable Seer Droid will be for daily usage. I was really surprised to see that most of the menus were different compared to stock CM14. Now, let me show you that I'm currently running Seer Droid. The first thing I noticed after I browsed through some apps was that the buttons were configured differently. Long pressing the home button will get you into Google Search Assistant, while simple tapping the option key will get you into recent tab panel. Also, related to this is the brand new feature of Android N, switching back and forth between the latest two apps when the simple tap will come handy. I wanted to show you the battery percentage, so at the end of the video, you'll make an impression on how fast it drains out. The place where Seer Droid is getting more advanced than any stock CM ROM is in the settings app, when you can find the personalization menu. Here you can set network traffic in a notification bar, a Seer Droid signature to show your friends. Keeping up with the status bar, you have a bunch of customizations regarding the brightness control and toggles. You can add different shortcuts to the lock screen so you can access them easier as you can see here. You can also hide the clock, date, alarm from the lock screen and you can enable different gestures like double tapping anywhere on the lock screen will turn off the screen. Long pressing the home button while screen is off will also activate a torch. When you're in those dark places and you want to see if you stepped in your trolling neighbor's dog's shit by mistake. Going through the Recent app settings, I found that this ROM comes in handy with immersive recents, which will hide the notification bar by making the screen look much bigger when you want to switch back and forth between different apps. Also, if you don't like the default Android recent app panel, you can use OmniSwitch. I personally don't like the OmniSwitch, so I'll stick to the default one. You can also increase the volume steps here, so you can have more precise adjustment to your playing sounds. In the miscellaneous section, you can deactivate the text Android and add it to the subcategories in the settings app. One thing I noticed from the status bar tweaks was that, like in the CM14 ROM, 
I couldn't change the battery style. Let's test out the performance right now. As you can see the graphics in the Antutu benchmark were pretty laggy, but that's normal for a phone this old. At the end of the benchmark test I got 38,630 points, which is pretty good. Testing gaming performance will be put to the test with one of my favorite games, Altus Adventure. It performed decent, micro lags and frame drops could be visible from time to time. Somebody requested me in my previous video that I should use CPU-Z to check out the battery and CPU temperature and that is what I got. Speaking about the sensors, all of them were working fine without a miss. The major bug which was present on stock CM14 was the camera not even being able to take a photo. Here on Droid it seems to work just fine. Video recording still doesn't work as stated at the beginning of my video. This stock browser this ROM comes with is kinda laggy and I suggest downloading Google Chrome for a much faster experience. Making a phone call was easy and effective. And since we're in the cellular zone, let's check if the mobile data is working in LTE and 3G since I read about CM14 having a bug with them. As you can see, both 4G and 3G modes are working pop properly. Testing out the multitasking shows that this ROM is keeping all the apps in the background pretty well. For some reason, root is not activated by default, so you'll have to get into development options and set root mode to apps. Root checker app shows that this phone is rooted after I installed the SuperSue app, but either way isn't able to recognize the rooting capabilities. That was pretty strange. Audio FX with the stock music player works just fine, as well as the lock screen music visualizer. Compared to the CM14 stock ROM, SearDroid gives users the ability to add more tools in the notification bar like data saver, reboot menu and caffeine. YouTube videos are lag free, even in 720p at 63 frames per second. Here you can see my latest video testing out CM14 optimized. Make sure you watch it later if you're interested in CM14 ROMs. At the beginning of the video my device showed 90% battery left and I played a little bit with it, doing benchmarks, browsing stuff, I've come to a value of 79%, which is decent. At the end of the video I discovered the wallpapers this ROM comes with, and they are pretty fast. So that was the brand new Sierra Droid ROM for Samsung Galaxy S4. If you have any questions or advice I should take into consideration, please make sure you give me your feedback in the comment section right down below. As always, don't forget to subscribe if you like my content. Wicked is out, until next time, take care.